insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 101. This is the first in a creativity series we're going to be doing. We're going to be talking about creativity in a form of artwork today. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my intuitive and creative co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. So how was your week this week? It was all right. Um, nothing too crazy. Um, I actually wasn't too stressed this week, which was good. That's a kind of a change. Maybe the, the nice weather we had, because we had some nice sunny, warm days this week. Maybe that helped. Maybe. Yeah, anyway, you weren't too stressed, so that's always a good sign. Do you have any tests or any quizzes or anything big this week? Uh, yeah, actually. I had two quizzes in math and a quiz and a test in ELA. Wow, that sounds like a kind of a challenging week and you weren't stressed out. That's impressive. Yeah. Maybe uh maybe the podcast is starting to help. You never know. You never know. So we will be talking uh artwork today. Um so the next couple of episodes that we're gonna be doing are gonna focus on uh creativity, the benefits that it offers to teens, some of the benefits that you get from it. And then we're gonna talk kind of a little more in depth about your experience with these creative endeavors. Okay. Uh, but before we, we do get into that, I would uh, suggest that folks subscribe to the podcast. You can find us, uh, our audio versions listed as insights into teens. Our video versions are listed as insights into things. And that will get you all the videos for the network. We are listed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, pretty much any place you can get a podcast these days. Uh, we also invite folks to reach out to us and give us some feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are on Twitter at insights underscore things. Uh, we are on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast where you can get links to all of our social media on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Shall we get into it? We shall. Let us commence shalling. So the first thing I wanted to kind of discuss was the benefits to teens um, that art provides and, and, you know, what, why is art important to teens? So this week's research came from a website called MasterpieceSociety.com. And it's, it's some of the basic stuff that you would expect. So they say that, that children like to experiment and push boundaries. They like to bend or break the rules. And they like to be their own unique self. And art provides the perfect vehicle for them to do these things. Do you think that art allows you to kind of push your boundaries and experiment with the kind of person that, that you want to be when you grow up? I mean, yeah. When you think about some of the regular classes in school, like math, English, um, science, and history, a lot of that is kind of structured. There's really no creative potential the students can really have, except maybe an ELA. Most of the time, it's kind of just the structured format that we've been using for a while now um but with art kids are allowed to be themselves and figure out who they are you have a lot less boundaries a lot less limitations and there's so many more potentials for you to become to find yourself and do things your own way sure yeah 
They go on to say that through the artistic process, teens can spread their wings and even soar as they discover their gifts and talents and ultimately who they really are. So they have a list of various benefits, and I'm going to just quickly run down the list and see if you've experienced any of these benefits yourself. So the first one they talk about is art allows teens to explore their feelings and emotions. Do you kind of pour your emotion into your artwork? I mean, there's a lot of times that I do um, have that going on. Like a lot of times um, when I'm feeling a certain emotion, I kind of have a character going through that emotion that I draw. Um, sometimes I just, um, I, sometimes when I am exper experiencing a bad feeling, I kind of try to make a slightly happier drawing that's kind of doesn't like, like kind of shows my grief, but puts it in a happier light. Interesting. So they talk about using art to reconcile conflicts. Have you ever, has that helped you? Like I can't even in my own mind fathom an example of this, but have you ever had an exa this example where uh, maybe you, you drew a picture for a friend to try to resolve something or you used a, a piece of artwork you were working on to kind of work your way through how to solve that problem? Actually, yes. I do have a specific example of it. So back when I was in sixth grade, I didn't have a lot of emotional control. It was when I first kind of started experiencing mood swings, and I wasn't good at controlling them. Um, and sometimes I'd lash out at one of my friends, and we wouldn't talk for a little bit, and I'd have to tr figure out a way to resolve it. So this one time, it was actually kind of late in the school year, so, um, and I hadn't been lashing out as much, so this was like the first time I'd really lashed out in a while. Um, and I just so happened to have art that day, and we were drawing, uh, bookmarks, um, like, we were, like, having names written down, and, um, we were designing bookmarks like that, and I decided to make one for her, and by the end, since we were both in aftercare, I ended up giving it to her as a, hey, sorry, I got mad, hope you can forgive me, and we did end up making up. Interesting. I would not have guessed that, but that's a very good example. So the next couple actually <clears throat> fall into that, um, th that sort of same situation, I think. So one is that, Art helps to become teens to become more self-aware, uh, and it helps to manage and improve behavior, which it sounds like this one specific example, um, it seemed to do both of those for you. Would yeah. you agree? Yeah, I'd say so, because when I was making it, um, I wasn't, I had been a lot more calm. Um, it had helped me kind of wind down from the fight and realize that, hey, maybe you should apologize. You really didn't mean to lash out. So it definitely helped me become more self-aware and helped improve my behavior. How about your stress and anxiety? Has, has your artwork and your and applying your skill in your artwork, does that help to reduce your stress and anxiety? I mean, yeah, when I do make art especially when i like outline things i feel a lot rel i feel very relaxed when i do art i never feel pressured to finish it it's just like you'll get it done when it get it gets done when it gets done and a lot of times doing the art is very calming and satisfying to me nice nice and that's exactly what it should be because it's a recreational activity for you mm -hmm. How about self-confidence and self-esteem? Does, does your artwork help you to build both of those? Uh, yeah. Especially when I compare it to the when I first started doing art. Like, a lot of times when I finish a piece and I look back in it and I'm like, wow, I just did that. And it really does help me boost my confidence and makes me say, hey, you're not just a regular artist. I'm pretty sure you're good. Like, yeah. it's kind of like that feeling. And especially when I compare it to when I first started, I'm like, wow, I've improved so much over only a few years. Yeah, that is true. It also goes on to say that, that art helps to improve a teen's sense of well-being. And I have to assume that a good portion of that is that sense of self-satisfaction that you get when you take it upon yourself to to 
do a piece of artwork or if someone commissions you to do artwork, and once you complete it and you see the reaction that you get from the audience, is that part of the well-being or is it deeper than that? Well, it is part of the well-being, seeing that other people like your art, but I think it's also the own self-satisfaction of it, realizing that you might be better than you originally planned, like, especially if you try something new for the first time and you realize, hey, you actually are kind of good at it. It was kind of the same thing when I made your poster. I had tried making... I tried a slightly different art style than what I was used to, and it actually turned out really nice. Yeah, it did. It turned out really nice. We might actually showcase that when we do our D&D uh, episode. Um, so they go on to say that it helps teens to think outside the box and it helps them to express themselves creatively. Now, I have to assume both of those are correct just based on that example you gave. I mean, yeah, because a lot of times when I do create art, um, it harnesses a lot of my creativity and i'm able to express myself in a lot more ways like art to me isn't just the drawing part it's also like multiple parts it's kind of also takes into the story aspect of it and like it shows not tells um it basically shows you a, it can show you something and give it a huge meaning kind of like propaganda if you will and that's a great segue into the next benefit they talk about here, and that's improving performance in other areas. So one of the other areas is actually telling stories. You know, you use it um, when you were making your comics, I mean, flat out to tell a story. Uh, but what other areas do you think art has helped improve for you? I think a lot of it is um, storytelling without words, basically. Um, like... You, once again, show not tell. You see a character in a situation, you can tell by their facial expression, by their pose, and just by the way they dress and what colors they're wearing, you can kind of tell about them. And I've learned how to express characters more through their accessories, their facial expressions, and their poses. It's funny that you have that level of insight into the artwork because a lot of classical artists, like you look at the works of Michelangelo, you know, you see what he did with the Sistine Chapel or the Last Supper, and and you realize, or Da Vinci rather, you realize that he tells an entire story with a single image, but there are so many elements in that image itself that it there's almost subplots that happen. Like you look at the last supper itself, there's, there's undertones, the shading, the colors, the depth, the expression, all these things that, that are incorporated into the work of art. They tell a story. It's not just a snapshot in time. You can go back and you can analyze each element of the painting itself. And while there's visual depth to the painting itself, there's a sense of depth in time as well because you can see how that the the painting how that entire scene progresses almost in time even though it is a snapshot so it's very similar to what you're describing yeah um so what about personal insight um art helps you achieve personal insight into who you are the type of person that you are what your personality is. Do you find that it t tends to bring out some of the qualities, those personality qualities that might not be right at the surface there coming out? I mean, yeah, there's a lot of times where like I can think of a particular image that kind of expresses a certain part of me. Um, there was one point when I was feeling like some negative emotions and I described them to you as somewhat of a demon look and uh the more i thought about it the more the demon kind of formed itself into a form and i know a lot of people kind of um make their negative emotions and draw them into what they perceive and it's really interesting to see how so many people perceive their own emotions because there are so many different ways someone can interpret one specific emotion 
Absolutely, yeah. I mean, and a lot of times it's difficult for teens to even label or vocalize what their emotions are, and, and art tends to help you to conceptualize those emotions that you're feeling that you can't vocalize. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that kind of leads us into the next section here. Um, this information came from a website called polaristeen.com, and they talk about the therapeutic benefits of art for teens. And there's a, what do we have, five, five items here that they talk about. And we'll just run through these real quick. One is a, um, it's, it's a productive self-expression. So being, uh, by being able to express oneself on a physical medium, teens gain a voice they otherwise may never be able to ac uh, access. Language is just one of the ways ideas are expressed, much, very much like what you were alluding to. But through the creative process, troubled youth can learn to visually convey what they're struggling to express in words. Have you found that, that your artwork is giving you a voice that you wouldn't normally have had? I mean, yeah, a lot of the things I think about, I can kind of put into a piece of art. Uh, like I said before, art normally shows you a lot more than just words would. Um, and drawing, if I did end up drawing that one demon, I think you would kind of understand it a bit more than me just describing it to you. Like, I couldn't entirely p pinpoint the exact moment I felt fear and why I felt fear. Um, so showing that one, so I kind of used the demon as a way to describe it. Um, and if I, and if I had drawn it out, then maybe it would have shown more um, than my words would have said. That's a very good point. The next thing they talk about is gaining self-control. Teenagers suffer from various psychological issues frequently. Uh, teenagers who suffer from various psychological issues frequently feel as if their life is something beyond their control. And I think a lot of us these days tend to feel that whether you're a teenager or not. This sense of personal paralysis can often cause feelings of hopelessness. But by stimulating the mind through artistic engagement, teens can create something that they can tangibly call their own. This helps regain the sense of self-determination necessary in order to overcome other problems in their life. So, do you find that, that your artwork has helped you to deal with stressful situations or some of the anxiety that that tends to build up and help you deal with it yeah because art isn't really stressing to me i never worry that hey you're not going to be able to finish it by this deadline like it's a way for me to kind of step back and control something that that and help me feel as though i'm in control of something that um um and makes me stop thinking about something i can't really control yeah Confidence through progress. By acquiring a progressively refined skill, such as painting, drawing, photography, and sculpting, adolescents can gain the confidence they need as their talents begin to improve. Being able to look at something they produced and physically see improvement of a unique skill is a tangible demonstration that things can get better with time and effort over time. Do you see yourself improving and does that does that help to bolster your confidence as you see those improvements yeah definitely like i said before the fact that i can look back at a like i can step back from a drawing and be like wow that's actually really cool and then like i look back at one of the earlier drawings and if i do want to try and redraw something i see how much i've improved and that and I feel a lot of people feel as though they don't improve their art style over a long period of time. Um, and I feel as though looking back and redrawing something from the past kind of helps that. And it helps gain their put their confidence up and realizes that, hey, you are improving. And yeah, it definitely teaches them that things can um, be improved with time and effort. And that's an interesting approach to go back and redraw something you may have drawn a few years ago just to see how your skills have improved, to have that one-to-one -one comparison. Mm -hmm. They also say that art helps building an immediate sense of purpose. 
So art is a tangible medium. An artist is able to look at what they have produced and realize they created something positive and worthwhile. Looking at a beautiful painting they have made and a fun drawing that expresses their interests, or at a photograph that reminds them of a positive time in her life, makes them realize they are producing something real and lasting. Does that sense of permanence of your artwork have an effect on you? Does it does it inspire you? Does it what kind of effect would something like that have on you? Well, yeah, I really like um having a permanent drawing to like that represents a positive aspect of my life, especially when I draw something of the cats. It makes it like makes me think it re- it reminds me of them. I think of how amazingly silly they are. Um having something like that really does help and a lot of times it's kind of similar to having an actual photo that you took like like uh this says um but that but i feel drawing it gives it a bit more purpose to you because you're able to have it expressed the way you kind of want it to be expressed and it makes and it reminds you of a particular instance where when you were drawing it you were thinking of that particular instance that kind of thing yeah and and the interesting thing is it's your interpretation of that moment in time where somebody else who may have been at the same dance or or wedding or whatever they look at it from a different perspective so when they see your drawing they even get to to take a little extra out of it seeing it from your perspective which is kind of neat So the last thing they talk about here is that art is good at finding a lifelong interest. One of the reasons why uh, uh, experiential treatment through art has produced such remarkable results is that it allows teenagers to find a lifelong engagement. This passion may persist well beyond their clinical treatment. Creative therapies can produce a sense of value both in the present and the future. These healthy coping mechanisms can replace risky and dangerous behaviors. Art therapy acts as an aid to those struggling with depression, substance abuse, low self-worth, and other serious mental issues. So I know you don't suffer from really any of those particular ones, although we, we did go through a depression phase here that we worked through. Does art help you when you get into those moods you know everyone gets into that 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 lull that down mood especially nowadays with the pandemic and everything does art help to lift you out of that funk we'll call it yeah i'd say that be doing anything creative really helps me to kind of step away from reality because art is really what you make of it and um, if you want to make and stepping away from reality and making something fantasy always seems to help me because it's taking a step back from the real world that although you shouldn't leave it fully, it's still always good to get a- to get away for a little bit. And art is a good way of doing that because your art is you make art the way you want to make it. It's your own It's your own ideas, it's your own way of life, and it's your own point of view. That's a very good point. Um, (coughs) Excuse me, that was all we had for some of the clinical benefits of it. We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk about you and your art. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. 
visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about creativity and specifically artwork. So Madison, you enjoy various forms of art, painting, drawing, digital art, and so forth. What started you on your journey to making art? <sighs> well, as a young child, I'll say, I was a to- I'll say a toddler. Um, I kind of had that instinct where I liked to draw what I saw and what I found cool, that kind of stuff. Um, that kind of was what kind of made me to start doing actual art but i'd say what actually started my full-on passion for art would be the comics i made um specifically what made me start the comics was when we were at um we went to a comic book store for free comic book day and i saw this particular spongebob comic at the time i really loved spongebob and i still love it um so We'd gotten the comic, as well as some other comics, um, and I read that thing nonstop, and it, one day the thought kind of came to me, what if I made my own comics? Like, I was thinking about, like, how cool the artwork was, and how cool it was to make these stories, and then, and then I'm like, why not make my own? And that's kind of what started my career in comics, which inevitably started my career in art. Interesting. So... I, I read comic books too, so I totally get what the inspiration is from there. I don't have um, an ounce of artistic ability whatsoever to draw. Um, stick figures are a challenge for me in most cases, so I wish I had the, the ability to draw because I would love to do comics. Do you still create comics? Uh, no, I actually stopped a couple years ago. Any particular reason? I mean, there were multiple reasons that kind of went into it. Um, it was when it was in sixth grade when I stopped. Um, part of the reason for stopping was that I was kind of just busy with schoolwork. I didn't have as much free time on my hands. Um, and with a lot of schoolwork going on and um, a little less emotional control, it kind of became hard for me to create um, the comics. Another reason was just I kind of got tired of the comics. I'd been doing it for three years ever since I was in fourth grade and honestly creating the comics felt more like a chore and less like a hobby um so that's kind of why I stopped and the final reason I'd say was because I was trying to improve my art style ever since I first made it I was using the same kind of stickish but spongebob looking style and I although I had improved over time, I kinda got tired of repeatedly drawing these little characters and I honestly started to feel as though it was a little less fulfilling for art specifically, so I kinda stopped in order to improve my style a bit more. It's interesting that you would have um been cognizant at that age that you knew that the style you were in was holding you back. So that's that's actually a very mature approach to it. Thanks. So you still do art now, but what's your preferred form of art, your preferred medium to work in? Do you do you sketch? Do you paint? Do you sculpt? Do you digital art? What do you do now? I'd say right now um, I mainly do digital art. I do sometimes experiment with other mediums, but I'd say digital art is probably the one I like the most. I did originally um, sketch a lot, um, but being left-handed and normally using a pencil, it would kind of smudge a lot, and it would kind of get a little messy, and I would never really be able to color it in, because for some reason it always looked bad when I colored it in, because, like, the pencil kind of smudged and smudged with all the other colors, so I never really... It never really looked nice, but when I was able to do digital art, it looked a a lot nicer. I was actually able to color it in, and it wasn't a smudgy mess. So I definitely think um, that digital art is my preferred medium, um, just because it is so convenient for me. So when you do digital art, how do you do this? Are you using a drawing pad on a PC? Are you using a tablet? What are you using? Um, I'm using my one tablet. Um, I got that you guys got me, which you did 
originally get it for me so that I would draw on it. Um, and it actually took me like a year or so before I actually started doing full on digital art with it. Um, we ended up getting me a drawing glove because, you know, touch, having your, having your hand on the digital surface, um, kind of messed up the drawing. So I got a digital glove for that. You guys also got me a digital, uh, pen your pencil your apple my, pencil my apple pencil so that i could draw um with so it. you're working off of an ipad with a pencil I, apple pencil right now yep that's um how i'm doing it and you find that that gives you the level of of control and and resolution for your artwork that you're comfortable with yeah i still i like the fact that it feels like a real pencil and that it is like it basically like drawing on paper because I still like doing that. Um, so yeah, um, I like it. Okay. So where do you draw inspiration for your artwork from? Do you, is it spontaneous? Is there a theme? Do you get it from everyday life? What, what makes you produce the artwork that you produce? There's a few things. Um, one is specifically characters that I've made up. Um, um, a lot of it that I've, a lot of them I've made in my, in the one app, um, Gasha Club. And I've been using that as somewhat of a way to, like, I draw those characters from it and I change up their poses, put them more in my art style and give them a little more personality than just a regular character design from the app. Another thing is my daily life. A lot of the times with the cats, um, like there was this one in, like, I come up with a lot of cute things. Just today, um, my cat Pumpkin kind of sits like this a lot, um, on the ground. And I kind of thought of her as, like, being a CEO. And, like, I thought of her at a desk with a giant chair in a little tuxedo and, like, trying to stand up so that she looked, like, intimidating like a boss. But she really wasn't and she just looked adorable. So that is, um, also where I draw inspiration. Um, as well as kind of art challenges, um, uh, like redrawing your old art. Um, that was kind of a challenge that other people did and I kind of wanted to do as well. Um, I do some other, I do other versions of it. Um, there are other different, uh, types of challenges I've tried. So yeah, I guess those are where I draw my inspiration from art. So you talked about your style of art. Now, there's a lot of different styles of art out there. There's formal definitions. There's informal definitions. What? How would you characterize your style of art? How would you describe it? Well, I definitely know I'm not into realistic art. I'll, I don't really know how to do draw things realistically. I'm a lot more into character design um, and drawing specific characters. It's kind of like in a... A mix of cartoon and realistic. Like, I try to draw them in realistic poses and stuff, but still in a, like, round but pointy cartoony style. Um, there's a specific way I draw faces, um, a specific way I draw necks. Um, I do try to make them look somewhat realistic, but still cartoony at the same time. So, what inspired you to develop this style? I mean, like, a lot of artists don't develop their own style until later in their experience once they've had a chance to sample other styles. So a lot of young artists like you tend to emulate styles that they're learning as they go through. What what prompted you at such an early age to sort of develop your own signature style, which I think is fantastic, by the way? Well, yeah, part of it was drawing inspiration from other artists. I was still kind of one of those kids. Um, and then I realized that I didn't really want to just... And I kind of decided that, you know what, let's stop this and kind of go my own path. Then I kind of started experimenting for a little bit, experimenting different ways to draw faces, different ways to draw bodies. Um, and eventually I did come up with my own style for it and even now i'm kind of tweaking things to make them look a little more to make them look a little better to the way i want them to be very interesting so do you think you're destined for some sort of art related career when you graduate 
high school or college or, or whatever? More than likely. I don't think I'll be making paintings specifically in that art form, but I do think that I still want to have some career that is based on my artistic ability because I feel as though it's, uh, I'm, I feel as though I've put so much work into it now, it would be kind of a waste to get rid of it. Um, or, you know, I just do it for a hobby and have a art-related job. Interesting. Yeah, I guess that works either way, as long as you're doing what you, what you enjoy doing, right? Yep. So let's take a quick break, and we'll come back, and we'll talk about the steps to pursuing your passion for artwork when we come back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to our creativity podcast, talking about artwork and Madison's artwork. So I want to talk about what, what, what you steps or, or what steps you take to pursue uh, your passion for artwork. And really, the, I guess the, the first and most important question is, how did you learn how to draw? Um, a lot of it um, actually came from inspiration in my daily life. Um, when I was first drawing, um, I did a lot of family portraits of you guys, but also a couple things that I just saw randomly and I wanted to draw. Um, I noticed looking back at a lot of my old art, um, a lot of it is stuff that I would have seen when I was younger. And it was kind of the same thing when I started the comics. Like, that one comic book inspired me to make the comics, and the very first comic I made was a specific which was kind of an alternate universe version of the comic's main story. And I, and I kind of went off of some Spongebob episodes at first before I ended up going into my original storylines. Um, and when I was trying to reform my style, I did kind of take inspiration until I finally said, you know what, let's drift off and do something new. Interesting. So, COVID's affected everything, obviously. How have the restrictions surrounding COVID impacted your creativity? Well, it's kind of actually what got me into digital art. It actually got me into a lot of my newer hobbies. Um, I was still kind of, I was still drawing hand I was still hand drawing at the time. Um, and then, like, when I saw other people starting to do digital art, and I remembered, hey, wait a minute, I have some digital art apt on my iPad, I kind of started doing a bit of digital art, I experimented, I had been, and at some point, Mommy had found out when, like, I was drawing, when I was drawing with my one hand, um, and she kind of, and then it kind of came out saying, hey, I like doing digital art. And then we got some supplies for me so that I would be, th so that I'd do digital art more. And I've been using all of them. Interesting. Interesting. So it hasn't impeded your ability to do art. It's, it's kind of opened up new avenues for you, it sounds like. Yeah, it has opened new avenues for me. That's very cool. So my expression of creativity, like I said, does not come in the form of artwork. Um, but it's in the form of, of creative writing typically for me. And inevitably, no matter how much I tend to write and publish or whatever, uh, I run into writer's block eventually. And 
I always find it challenging to work through that. So what do you do to motivate yourself when you find yourself in a creative slump when it comes to artwork? What, what drags you out of that? Well, how do you how do you get over that speed bump? A lot of that is actually kind of brings me into writing and creating actual characters. When I create a new character, I'm kind of like, okay, when, well, when I do have a creative slum, I'm like, okay, let's create a new character and try drawing them. Then I'm able to kind of have a few more ideas. I come up with the character, a slight little story about them, so I know how to work with them and such. And that's kind of the way I get out of that creative slump, out of that one creative slump. Another way is playing The Sims. I take, I actually take a decent amount of creative inspiration from The Sims. I've actually drawn some of the specific packs as actual characters. So, yeah, there's a few things that help me motivate. Well, that's interesting that your motivation to get out of that slump comes from other mediums of art. I think that's, that's actually very unique. So, Let's talk about encouragement. So it's it's hard to do things that are challenging and require skill if you don't have encouragement, you don't have people that are backing you. So do you feel that you get sufficient amount of encouragement for your artwork endeavors from mommy and I or your friends or your teachers? Um, or do you feel like you're, you, you're going it alone a lot of times? Um, well, I definitely know that you guys are very supportive. You guys have helped me get all the supplies I need for creating art, and you in, and you basically kind of give me assignments to do for art, like the one D&D thing. You asked me to make a poster for you, um, and I could make it wh- however way I wanted. You just needed a poster for it. Um, and I was able to experience a new creative way and I realized that I really kind of liked it and I definitely say you and mommy are very supportive of my creative uh, of me being creative and I know my friends um are really supportive of the fact that um I've been creative because they were also kind of an inspiration for making comics for me so I I'd say my friends also really do help me when uh do really like the fact that I do art that's great, you know, especially when your friends are into it and they like what you do because you get that feedback, you know. You know, when you do art and show us the art, you know, I try to stay positive. You know, I, I certainly don't want to be negative, but I also don't want to sugarcoat it because if there's areas for you to improve, you need to hear about that. Yeah. So one of the things that I do try to do is creatively criticize anything that I think needs to be improved on. Mm-hmm. And... To your credit, you're very receptive to that type of of input and you incorporate that into your future artwork. Do you find that getting that constructive criticism is something that has helped improve you as an artist? I mean, yeah. Like, although you don't want to be mean, you don't – you always – like, you don't want to always say that someone is doing something perfectly because – Someone could do a pretty bad drawing, and you're like, oh, wow, that's really nice. And, like, you can, like, sugar- sugarcoat it to the point of accession, and they will and they won't be able to improve on it. Now, I don't think it's bad if you do want to say something nice, um, and I do think that you need to be good with criticism in order to not criticize them to the point where it makes them upset, but... Don't always sugarcoat everything because then they'll never improve and they'll think they're just perfect at it and they won't try anything new and improve themselves. Very good point. So we talked in a previous segment about whether or not you thought you would pursue a career uh, in an art-related field. If you did, what ideas have you had about the type of career that you would go into that would allow you to take advantage of this skill you've developed over the last, you know, so many years? Um, well, I'm going into the engineering academy for high school, and a lot of that um, also has something to do with art. Um, and um, I definitely think that I'm not going to have a full-on career where I draw specifically, but having a career where I have the chance to draw something um, is 
probably something that I want to do. Like, in school now, like, there are some assignments where, like, we need to draw something for it, and I kind of figure as though that's kind of something that I want my career to be like. Like, it's not going to be entirely art-based, but it still has some elements um, that can help me hone my creative way and make art. Very good. So when I gave you the assignment for the poster for the D&D session, um, I had asked you to do it in a style other than your signature style, just as a challenge to you. And to your credit, you stepped up and you did a very good job stepping outside that comfort zone. What is the next challenge for you? What, like, what, what's the next creative obstacle that you want to get past to expand your ability? You've already recognized the fact that working in comics was not helping you to excel. So you, you had the forethought to step outside of that and, and move into something else. If you were to change things right now and learn a new skill, what skill do you think you'd like to learn from an artistic standpoint that would help to elevate your artistic abilities? Um, I think maybe drawing things other than characters. I've gotten a lot of um, way with drawing people, but I'm not particularly well with animals or inanimate objects specifically. Um, I've done a couple drawings with the cats, but I definitely say they're not my favorites because I don't particularly... The cats or the drawings? Drawings. Oh, okay. Just checking. <laughs> um, and they're not... Pr the drawings aren't particularly my favorite drawings, pr probably just because I haven't actually practiced making animals a lot. Um, and I'm not saying that they're bad, it's just I haven't really practiced a lot on them, and if I were to change up my style, I'd try drawing more animals um, and less um, people. Okay, that makes sense. So, the last question I have here, I don't want to steal your thunder from your closing thoughts, so kind of characterize these separate from your closing thoughts. What advice would you have for others, your age group, who might be interested in learning how to create art? How should they do it? What tools should they use? What um, techniques should they, you know, start working on? Um, just some some general ideas of if someone came to you today and said, hey, I love what you do, how can I get into that too? Um, well, I'd start off by saying find stuff you like about it and try them out. Like if you if you think that there's a particular thing about art, like... Uh, like costume designs like if you like costumes of, of characters that people make why not try drawing costumes like i say that try to get in like think of something that you like about the drawing and try drawing something like that for yourself that can kind of get you into art because it focuses less on the parts of art you can't do um and more on the parts that you love so I definitely think it's, um, that is something that you should probably do. Another thing is try taking some inspiration. Like, you can take inspiration from multiple different people. You're not necessarily stealing it, but change it up. Um, um, make it your own. And it's not bad to take, get, get inspiration from someone, but don't entirely steal everything they do. If you like a particular style, try it out, but make a few adjustments um, for something that you want to do. Um, if there's a particular thing you don't like about that style, try changing it up and see if you can make it a little more different and a bit more unique to you. Okay, I think that's some fantastic advice there. So that was all we had today. I, we're going to take a quick break and come back. We'll get your closing uh, thoughts and shout-outs, and then we'll finish up with the rest of the podcast business. Go for your closing thoughts. Okay, so to anyone out there who wants to try art or has been trying art and wants to change, I always, I just want to say that, um, always make sure you try to improve. Um, and you, and to people out there who do want to help other people and not, 
I definitely say I don't I definitely want to say don't sugarcoat everything. Um have some constructive criticism um and help them to improve. Don't sound mean if you don't like their style. Try to ha- figure out ways to Im- to help them improve because a lot of people just a lot of people who um want to ha- who make art kind of need that satisfaction from others but can also get some help from them as well. Okay, very good words of wisdom there. Uh, before we go, I do want to encourage you to subscribe to the podcast. You can get video versions of our podcast listed as Insights into Things. Audio versions are listed as Insights into Teens. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and any place you can get podcasts on your podcast catchers. I would also uh, ask folks to uh, reach out and give us some feedback. Let us know how we're doing. Give us some topic suggestions that you'd like us to talk about. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get high res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream on Twitch six days a week at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are an Amazon prime subscriber, You do get a free Twitch Prime subscription monthly. We'd really appreciate it if you threw that our way. Uh, Audio versions of the podcast are available at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. We are available on Facebook at facebook.com slash insightsintothingspodcast. On Instagram, we are at insightsintothings. Or you can get links to all those on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Dot com and you and don't forget to check out our other two podcasts insights and entertainment hosted by you and mommy and it's into the tomorrow our monthly podcast hosted by you and my brother sam awesome and i think that's it we will be doing we will be shooting uh hopefully insights into tomorrow a new episode tomorrow uh i think that's it another great podcast anything else before we go um Not that I know of. Go create something. Go create something. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Another one in the books.